Hello, everybody. My name is James Cool. I'm the producing artistic director here at Tipping Point, and uh, we are continuing our talks and our discussions with artists about creativity and how it is that they create outside of theater and what types of different outlets that they use in that, that particular process. Today, we are speaking with Richard Payton. Richard Payton is an actor in the area. Um, uh, if if uh, you have been to, I think, any of our um, most recent um, New Year's Eve events, I think, Richard, uh, you've done them how, how many how many years in a row now? I think it's at least uh, three. No, I think I missed one year. I did one, and then I missed one, and then I was in the third. After them. You were in, uh, so the first one was the, the Princess uh, New Year's Eve. You were in yeah. that one because you were the, the fairy god bartender. That's right. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> and then most recently, uh, you were Dionysus, right? Yes. Yes. I'm glad you remember because I was, <laughs> what? oh yeah, that one. Well, the wardrobe, uh, the wardrobe on Dionysus was was certainly something very, very memorable, which I understand all came from your basement. It did, not necessarily from me that I own, but it was left here, and so I used it. Excellent. Uh, also, uh, Richard, I know that you were in the the, the very last uh, sandbox that we that we did, and I think that was. In, uh, correct me if I'm wrong. Was that your first sandbox or your second? That was my second. That was your second From the scene. number of years back. You directed me in the scene, actually. It was Dave Davies about J.D. Salinger. Yes, yes. Oh, yes. That was the last time that we did it um, over at um, uh, Gennetti's Hole in the Wall. That's right. That's right. I remember that now. Oh, wonderful. Well, good, good. So uh, there's a little intro to, uh, to Richard. And now uh, Richard is the, I want to say, owner and one of the founding partners uh, i'm not i'm not i think there's only two of you of the gay there baker is. correct yes um it's christopher cam and i he's um, my partner my boyfriend um housemate roommate whatever you want to say and uh when did you uh how long have you been doing uh this business because i think that it, there's a certain step where it goes from like hey this is kind of fun to do to like no this is a legitimate business and i think like getting a title for the business is is one of those things so how did how did this uh come about uh, well i i think when uh, christopher and i first met um we lived about an hour and a half apart so we would spend like weekends together and then not see each other so when we got together we have like a day together so what do you do with all this time we're like let's mm -hmm. let's bake something and, and actually i think one of um one of our first couple dates he came over and i was like let's make let's make pizza and i didn't really read the recipe um <laughs> but but we just were taking it step by step and i and we had it all mixed and i was like all right christopher what's the next step and he goes um let rest 18 hours 18 hours <laughs> <laughs> um after that moment um we just kind of like started trying new things. I like the savory stuff, so I was like, let's make bread, bagels, pretzels. And he wanted to try cakes and pie crust, which um, his pie crust is incredible. And then we just started posting like pictures of stuff we made on our Instagram. And we did a hashtag gay bakers. And we were like, oh, all right, that'll be fun. And then it was like, well, I wonder if anyone's taken that domain name on Instagram. And so, no, there were no, no one had gay bakers, the gay bakers. So we we're like, well, let's just take it and go from there. So really all we started off with was taking pictures of stuff we baked. And just based on the pictures alone, people were like, wow, they must be great bakers. <laughs> um, <laughs> so I mean, like really all, all people do is that we, re we were able to take really good pictures of food, you know? Um, but we were also proudly making these things um, and then just sharing them with friends, family, and I guess word just started getting around. Um, when people were like, hey, can you bake us this? Can you bake us this? And we were like, whoa, well, I think, I think we have something here. So, and I think we're still kind of in a transition period. You know, we don't have uh, a sole kitchen that we use because we only, what well, we bake for ourselves, it's just out of our home kitchen. Um, and you want to do something a little bit more industrial, you need more than one tiny little 
oven, you know. So we'll, we'll rent out like a church uh, kitchen and stuff like that to, um, to make stuff like that. We did uh, a wedding this past January for like 200 cupcakes, which was so wonderful. Um, a dear friend of ours just asked us to do it, and um, and thankfully for my for Christmas, my sister got us little um, Gay Baker stickers and chef's coats with Gay Bakers on them, and so we're like, well. We've really got like a little professional little thing. It's a fun side gig that um, we just love doing. So uh, when, um, well, I guess then the, the question kind of is, when did you go from um, taking really good photos of food to actually making really good food? Like, <laughs> is uh, d because I, you, you've done uh, the, the opening night reception for us here at uh, Tipping Point, and, and they're delightful. They're absolutely delightful, yeah, the, the cookies and the, and the desserts that we, uh, that we had. But um, did you find that you and, uh, and Chris, Chris, right? Yeah, Chris. Yeah, uh, that you and Chris were just naturally like, oh yeah, if you follow this recipe, this turns out really good. Or uh, did you find like, well, this is okay, but I think we need more cinnamon. And uh, like, what was that? How long did it take to go from following the recipe to we know better? Um, not not long. Like we we always start with the recipe, but what we like to do is is research it and look at the same recipe. N numerous different ways, lots of different people's opinions on it, and then like uh, view the comments on, on a, a website, see what other bakers have done, what issues they've had, so that we know going into it um, what to expect, and then go from this experience. And I, I think we spent like a year just baking and taking pictures, not knowing it was going to be anything. So we had a year of just baking for ourselves and friends, gaining that experience. Um, that we knew enough at that point, well, when we do this, you know, if we beat the eggs a little bit beforehand before you add them in, that works better than just plop it, cracking the egg, throwing it into the batter. You know, little stuff like that, um, fine tunes little touches that in the end, when it pull out of the oven, you find, oh, well, this is better than before. And I guess we're always still learning too, you know? How do you, uh, because um, I, I did a, um, another uh, one of these interviews uh, with um, um, uh, a, a kid of, of a local uh, artist and she's very talented. Uh, she auditioned for uh, like Master, Master Chef Kids. Um, oh wow. And, yeah, and uh, I, I talked to her about um, the, the process of, of, I wanna say, discovering that this could be a creative outlet um uh for her uh and so i'm wondering for you do you consider this to be well i guess i juxtapose that a little bit with my neighbor who is a chemist who loves baking because of the science that that comes okay. around uh you know between it so for for you do you find it to be more of uh this creative uh flourish or is it more of like no this is awesome because these chemicals uh, react in this way and it's edible and delightful what I enjoy most is the act of creation, you know, to to put something together, to work on it, to craft it, if you will, to take from a, an idea in your head of what you want to make. And then finally that moment when you pull it out of the oven, you go, I made this. It's so satisfying. And that's that's what I love. And it it fulfills that need, and especially right now when we as artists want to make things, um, make art, well, I'll, I'll make bread then, you know? <laughs> Which actually became, uh, you know, uh, in this in this time, became a, a very popular activity. Where all of a sudden, where you couldn't buy bread because uh, people were buying it like crazy out of the stores. All of a sudden, then yeast started to not be available uh -huh. because everybody wanted to, you know, to like, well, we can't buy bread, so let's figure out how to make it. Right. We feel we feel very banal now. <laughs> <laughs> Part of the course, everybody. Oh, you, oh, you made a loaf of bread. Great. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's well, we'll take good for you. <laughs> <laughs> uh, okay, so uh, how about the? Uh, uh, I want to say the best surprise that ever came out of the out of the oven for you. Um, good, good surprise. <laughs> well, let's do both. Good, good and bad. <laughs> uh, 
I think the first time we ever made a cheesecake, which uh, are notoriously fickle, um, when we pulled out, I, and it was the first time we ever made a cheesecake. We just pulled it out, and it was this beautiful, smooth, lightly brown top. You undo the spring form, and it just came off cleanly, and you lifted it up, and it, beholding this gorgeous cheesecake was... I guess it was a surprise. We didn't know how we were going to do. Um, but then we also <laughs> pulled one out and then just dropped it right on the door of the oven. Which was, <laughs> no. I'll include it in the pictures. <laughs> because you're like, well, that's what we did today. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. So it's something like that. I mean, because there that's so apropos for the metaphor for uh like creating in theater anyway like there are some days that you show up to rehearsal and you work and you work and you get done and you it just sort of like gets dropped on the the floor and you go oh, well okay that's what we did today <laughs> i've had shows like that too you're right <laughs> <laughs> There's, there's, there's truth to that, that it doesn't always, uh, you know, come out exactly, exactly perfect. There are some days or there are some shows where you, where you try and, and, and it, and it just is a cheesecake that falls apart. Right. Yeah. I, ever since you, you mentioned this, this interview, I've been thinking about the parallels between uh, theater and, and, and baking. And I guess, because it's for consumption, you know, and it has that Zen moment of the here it is, and then it's gone, you know? And then the next time it'll be something new. And I, I, I love the idea of that. That is, that is very, very interesting because now even, um, you know, it, it, when uh, I talk to, to students, I talk to them about becoming a, a connoisseur, essentially, of, of theater. That the, the, the baker, well, I use, I use wine taster, you know, that uh, a vast majority of, of uh, individuals will, you know, drink wine and they're like, yeah, that, that, that gets the job done. Uh, <laughs> it, <laughs> Yeah, but then there are you know the people that are you know the the wine tasters and they're like mm, yes the the grass was uh, especially uh, especially mowed uh, in this oaky area that that gets so much more robustness from the surrounding oak trees and they can taste that in the wine, you know. I think I've had I, that glass. I think I've had that one right. <laughs> And, uh, I, you know, we, we talk about, you know, as theater makers, um, you know, we sit there and we, we look at that, that piece of theater and go, hmm, no, that needed a little more humor right there, or that, that moment was a little bit off, and that would have set up this in the end. And that's, that's a really great comparison, uh, Richard, because then, you, you, you know, you taste the cheesecake or the cookie or the, or the bagel, and you go like, hmm, we should have let that one sit a little bit longer, or, you know, we put that in the oven too long. That is, that's a really beautiful parallel. I love that. Thanks, yeah. One of my favorite things to do anytime I cook anything is, could it, been, could it have been improved and how? And I do it around friends and they're like, why do you got to get down on, on what you're making? But it, it's not about that. You know, if you're doing it on a regular basis, you want to, every, every time you can, you can get a little bit closer to perfection. Yeah, no, that's so true. And as, as actors, as artists, like how many times have we gone out to the lobby and, you know, the people are like, that was amazing. That was amazing. And we do something like, oh, you should have been here last night. That was way better. Right, you're right. You know, you know as that sort of expert in the in the the field of things there's this anticipation that whoever it is that is consuming what it is that you made is an expert just like you and so they're seeing and feeling all of the things that you think could be improved but the reality is like it tastes good you know or that was a good show you know like let's right. let's revel in that a little bit and then when we go back to you know go back to work we'll try and make it better precisely I guess that leads me to my next question for you. Now, with, with baking, do you find that there are times uh, for you that, um, you, uh, that it is um, like, you want to know what? Rehearsal didn't go well. 
I got to make four dozen cookies, you know, in order to get get the process moving again. Um, is it? Do you find that you create it with cooking in that way, or do you find that it's a little bit more of you? You wake up and you're like, well, literally, time to make the donuts. Really, <laughs> <laughs> you know, when is it for you? Uh, when is it work, and when is it uh, um, a creative outlet? I. I think most uh, most of the time when when I'm creating for myself, then it feels most like an outlet. Um, and when it's for someone else, it's work, you know. But there's, mm -hmm. but there's always always enjoyment in it. Um, what I love what I love the most is the patience that it takes to bake. And I, I think that's why so many people are doing it now, is because that's that's the only thing that. Um, it takes most of his time. You know, you make, you make a loaf of bread, that's gonna take two hours to just sit. So uh, I guess while we're doing that, we'll make a cupcake or whatever, it's some, it goes right away. I, I don't think I'm answering the question though. Um, no, you are, no, it's beautiful. Like that, that sort of idea that the patience of it, you, you know, even with the creation or the, the art of things, you know, that, that Zen sort of moment of being patient with yourself, being patient with what it is that you are creating, just taking that moment of, of not having to go, 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 uh, throw it in the microwave. I need it in, I need it in one minute and let's taste it and like yeah i'm i'm full right. i'll we'll, we'll get rid of that in a couple hours like yeah. you know there's a delicacy to it and um the reward that comes from patience that's i like that i like that quite a bit yeah thank you so is there a, a place uh, a website or facebook or instagram uh, where is it that people can go to uh connect uh with you uh see what it is that you do uh possibly buy your confections and wonderfulness we have um, uh, an online presence both on Facebook and on Instagram at, at Gay Bakers, both of those. Um, and most people just hit us up with requests uh, through there. And there are extensive photos uh, on both of those platforms for you to check out uh, what we've done. Wonderful. Wonderful. Thank you. Uh, I guess there's uh, there's one last curiosity that I that I have. And and. Um, so this past Christmas, my children uh, were given my wife's Easy Bake Oven. So she had it when she was a kid and her mom and dad saved it. And this past Christmas, it was given uh, to my kids. Uh, and so we busted out that Easy Bake Oven and myself and my uh, two youngest, we tried to make some sort of um, some, something with the Easy Bake Oven. And I will tell you, Quite honestly, it was terrible. Um, it was <laughs> completely inedible. Uh, it was very much like a dirty sponge is basically oh. what it is that we that we made. Um, but the thing that 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 fascinated me wasn't wasn't necessarily that, but that in the original instructions and everything like that, there have been competitions where the only thing that you can use is an easy bake oven in order to create, you know, some sort of uh, some sort of dessert. And I and when I read that, I thought about how that there is now um, um, uh, movies that you know the challenge is is that the movie has to all be shot on your phone so you do all of the editing mm -hmm. and shooting on your on your phone so i guess the the question uh for you is is if i bring over my easy bake oven will you accept the challenge to make something delicious with it i hate you right now but yes <laughs> we will accept that challenge but that sounds awful <laughs> <laughs> That's so terrible. <laughs> oh, oh, and you say that, but it's probably going to come out absolutely delightful. <laughs> it just might. It just might be our biggest surprise yet. And I've never even, I literally have never been in the same room with the Easy Bake Oven before. So I, I like it even just for the novelty of it. The novelty of it, right? It, it, it uh, quite frankly, it intimidated me quite a bit, and rightfully so, as I created dirty sponges that we that we <laughs> attempted to eat. So I, I, I'm guessing that you can't do much worse than than a dirty sponge. Okay, <laughs> wonderful. At least we have something to clean up with afterwards, then. <laughs> right, <laughs> right. 
<laughs> Excellent. Uh, Richard, thank you so much for, for talking uh, with me uh, today and, and uh, sharing your, your business and, and your, your joy uh, of, of baking. And I hope that individuals will uh, visit your site and, and um, you know, place some orders. Um, I, believe it's the, I believe it's the white chocolate chip cookies that you that you that you did for uh, our our opening uh, one of our opening receptions and they were um, they they changed my life they were absolutely were white chocolate and peppermints if I yes oh that's the one that's oh they're so good they, like, they are so really good the edges like yes. crispy and delightful so people get those you people order <laughs> them order them. So thank you so much, uh, Richard. Uh, uh, again, uh, be safe, and I can't wait to see you again at the theater. Thank you, James. It's been a great pleasure. I appreciate you having me here.